this is how to play Love Is Only A Feeling by The Darkness. The core members of The Darkness are the two Hawkins brothers, Justin Hawkins and Dan Hawkins. In this uh, song, they're playing uh, different parts and Dan has a capo at the seventh fret. So when I'm doing all the Dan Hawkins parts, I'm gonna be using the Les Paul with a capo at the second fret. All of Justin Hawkins parts has no capo, both guitars are in standard tuning, and it's actually in this case, all of Justin's parts that are much easier. Basic open chords or basic power chords for the majority, and then a big solo at the end. I will demo that solo, but I'm not gonna teach it. I'd recommend you check out Justin Hawkins' Patreon. I've uh, been a member of that Patreon for a while. I'm a huge fan, and uh, yeah, if you wanna learn it how he teaches it, then check out his Patreon. I'll leave the link below that. Here's how to play all sections of this awesome song. to play this song are a G5 open chord. So this is a G major chord without the first finger, uh, middle finger muting string five. D5 power chord, basically a normal D major without the thinnest string. A major, and then a couple of, uh, just knowledge really of how to play normal power chords with either two fingers or three fingers or like this. It doesn't matter at all. We're going to be focusing slightly more on the lead parts on this one. So the rhythm parts are fairly simple. Do which way you feel comfortable playing. A G, a D, and an A, for example. Uh, the other chord in the chorus is a B power chord, which is always played like this. So that intro, G, D, A, and then a little move, which is open, Second fret, F sharp power chord to G. That repeats again, G, D, A, and then a little bit of the blues riff to the same kind of rhythm as. In total. Cover the verses when I switch to Dan's guitar, the capo 7th fret version, though it would be all those same chords if you just wanted to do a strumming version, G, D, and A. The bridge. This is the Justin part to the bridge. These are just the 1 fret power chords, E5, A5, and then D5. It's just a cycle of down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. Then in the chorus, big power chords, but using these way of playing power chords is absolutely great, I think, in my opinion. B minor, so second fret power chord. G, D, Once that's repeated, A, E power chord, same chords, but without the music. One last demo of that. Love is only a feeling drifting away. When I'm in your arms, I start believing it's it to stay. But love is Anyway. 
Little bit of palm muting work there. Now I'm switching to the Les Paul, I'm on Dan Hawkins' parts, capo 7th fret, and the melody that opens the song, I would have you play it like this. That's how it starts. Um, Dan always varies this a little bit live, when he, especially when he goes throughout the song, as they should, having some fun with it. But essentially, we're starting off at the 12th, what is in reality the 12th fret of the double dot. Relative to the capo, it's fret five. So for around here, I'm gonna call it fret five, fret three, and fret two when I'm at the second fret here. So one, two, three, four, five. Five, 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 three, three, three. Open to second, open to open. And these are all kind of things that would be, we're kind of in the key of G here. which is useful for the verses, because those verses... So we've got, you know, that's what you'd be doing, strumming the same chords as in the intro, but transposing them to this key with C, G, and D. See, even at higher level songs, we're still using C, G, and D. You can't get away from them, really. So after that section. Which, if you follow the tab below, is pretty straightforward, especially in comparison with the rest of the song. Big bend here, this is, in reality, 17th fret to 17th fret on string uh, two and then three. Bending up, so middle finger is going to bend, supported by the first finger. Third finger is already going to be down on string one. This is, you know, common classic rock bend. Um, simpler way of doing it. A little bit more complicated way of doing it. Walking down that major scale. Which is a D major scale, but in this case, we're in the position, within the capo position of G, using kind of G shapes. Uh, second part. Harmony. So everything's the same apart from... This is a tricky bend. It's a whole step bend there. Do it with your third finger, maybe. Um, and then on one string... Um, so all of that... All major scale stuff. If you don't know the major scale, that would be something to be... Um, researching about all this D major scale just all over the neck. In the chorus, very easy compared to everything else. We're just going to set up with this, which is little finger capo fifth fret, one, two, three, four, five, first finger third fret. And you know, I have done, if I'm doing this on one guitar, which is really hard to do, but... You can do that kind of thing, but we want to learn it as two guitar parts and choose your part when you're jamming along to the recording. It's just string three, string two, string one, string two. After then, it just goes to basically the top notes of a G chord. In reality, it sounds like a D chord, capo key of G then. And that would finish it. Love is only a feeling anyway. All happy.
happens again. Then we get to uh, the break. Once all that happens again, after the second chorus, we get to kind of Dan's big solo. Dan doesn't get many solos in the darkness unless he's normally playing one guitar, but this is probably, you know, his his best and biggest solo of all the darkness stuff. And uh, one way of playing it is is this. And then stepping up. And then we're stepping into the full solo. So everything there's sort of based around. If you can play the intro, you should be able to play that part. And most of that is tabbed out uh, in the tab available with this lesson. Links in the description below or at the top on my website. The real bit you're wanting to learn, of course, is that big bend, which we've done already. Then it's all D major scale. And then repetition of what we've already done already. So that was, you know, one, two, three, four, five of a major scale. <laughs> Almost the same shape. Forget about the capo for a second. 12th fret is 12th fret. 12, 14, 11, 12, 14. 14, 16, 14, 15, 17. <laughs> 17, 19, 20, 17. And then bending up 21. Half a step to the pitch of 22. That's why I love darkness solos. You always end up using all of the guitar, like I believe in a thing called love. You literally gain from the from the open string up to the highest fret. Doesn't happen in many songs at all. Shut up, seagulls. <laughs> it's really warm. <laughs> I need the window open. <laughs> Rocking too hard. In summary, there is so much to gain from learning this song. Not least how it can be done in just basic open chords and doing the, playing the whole song like that. Playing a basic version, you know, anything you can do of the lead parts. There's some really easy parts. Think of that chorus part. You know, that kind of couldn't be more straightforward for a lead part in a chorus, you know what I mean? And then even the main solo. Yes, it's jumping about the neck a little bit, but mainly in major scale order, which just gives it all this... Even though we're in a minor key, there's kind of a really optimistic sound to this song and all the Darknesses stuff. Um, and when we get into classic rock stuff, it's all tend to, tends to be minor pentatonic. And it's really fun when, you know, someone just comes along and just goes, major, you know. Just so positive, even in this kind of, you know, the chorus at least is in D minor, but the song itself, I would say we're in D major. And that gives it all just this super positive sound. Not very pentatonic bass, this one. This is super major based. Here's me playing the end solo. Here's a close up of me and my attempt of it. Hope to see you guys next time. Bye bye for now.